Hey, what's going on guys? Alexis here from apphacker.com and today we're going to go over how to easily bypass Android SSL pinning using Frida without much technical knowledge. Before anything else, any commands, URLs, script or whatever that you might need to follow along can be found over on the article linked down below in the description. That being said, if you follow the last tutorial on how to intercept Android app network traffic and you're trying to use some specific application and ended up with an error such as this one in burp that says certificate unknown, then it's very likely that the application you're trying to intercept is using SSL pinning. SSL pinning is basically the application only trusting the certificates that it's configured to trust rather than the ones that the device trusts by default or in our case, the certificate that we added to be trusted as a system level certificate in the last tutorial, which is burps. For this test application, this was done using Android's own network security config. And I just said that for apphacker.com, the app is only going to trust this certificate, which is basically the site's certificate. If we check out the only activity on the application, we see that all it does is just load the URL. So there's really no reason for this blank page other than the SSL error. There are multiple ways to implement SSL pinning. This is just the most standard one, it's an Android's own way of doing it. Um, but there are other libraries that help you do this in a more programmatic manner. And yeah, then depending on how that's done, the complexity on how to bypass this can increase. However, since we're using a popular method, it's very likely that someone already has a solution for this, right? Uh, and yeah, that's basically what's going on. And we're going to take advantage of that fact and use Frida in order to bypass the situation. So Frida is a dynamic instrumentation toolkit for developers, reverse engineers, and security researchers, and it allows you to do a bunch of really cool stuff. But for our purposes, it allows us to modify the app's behavior while the app is running. So basically, you can hook, so to say, uh, into specific methods, uh, let's say, if you know a little bit about Android development, you can hook into the onCreate of the main activity and you can modify what it does. Clearly, this is extremely powerful and we're actually not going to be doing anything fancy. We're not going to be writing any, co any code today. We're going to be using free the scripts that other developers already wrote in order to help us with this situation. So first things first, we're going to need to install Frida and for that, we run this command. I already have it installed, so it says I already have it installed. And now we need to install the server that we're going to push over to the device um, so that the free to install on our computer can communicate with the server running on our Android device. You can get this server from Frida's GitHub page, but first I highly recommend you confirm what version you're running. If you just installed it, it should be the new one, the, the newest one, but uh, yeah, check anyways. And now we can head on over to Frida's GitHub page, releases, the specific release, and then we can search for server dash the version we're on dash Android, and then whatever architecture your Android device is running on. So I'm running an emulator on an ARM MacBook and that would be ARM64 for me. You can go ahead and download this. It's basically a zip file. You can unzip it and then you end up with a file like this. You, well, I have two because I already had this. Um, but yeah, you end up with a file like this that we're going to push to our device. And in order to do this, we're just going, oh, first of all, let's head on over to our downloads directory and we're going to use adb push our file and then data local temp and i'm not going to press enter because i already have it there but uh, yeah you go ahead and do that it doesn't need to be data local temp that's just what i usually use and after you do that you're going to want to run your uh, you're going to want to shell into your device as root, so do adb root, then adb shell, and then head on over to data local temp or whatever directory you uploaded your file to, 
confirm it's there and now we need to make sure that it's executable so change mob plus x the file itself enter no errors so we should be good to go and now we can go ahead and execute it once this is executed you should probably confirm that Frida installed correctly and that uh, you can communicate with the um, with the Frida from your device so go ahead and open a new shell a, a new terminal window or tab and write Frida dash u for USB even if you're in an emulator in order for Frida to communicate with your Android emulator you have to do dash u um, and then we're going to add an F which just tells Frida to attach to the foreground uh, service that is running which in this case is our application our test application press enter and if there are no errors and you see a prompt like this then everything worked and yeah just FYI you can script directly here um, yeah it's obviously more useful just to write your own scripts save them to a file and then run them um, since we're not going to write any code at all I'm now going to show you where you can find some cool free the scripts and obviously you can Google but free the website has its own culture as well and yeah as you can see the most popular thing over here is a universal SSL pinning bypass as well as a multiple unpinning bypass um, anti-roots and some other stuff I like the this multiple unpinning uh, script it's the one I usually use and um, yeah as you can see um, yeah, it, it bypasses multiple different types of SSL pinning, including the one that our app is using. And you could go ahead and copy paste this into a file, save it, and then execute it with Frida. But you don't even need to do that. Since it's in Frida's own code share, you can literally just copy this. You're going to need to add the dash U, so it knows to attach to the emulator then dash f and the package name of the application that you're trying to intercept so in this case that should be com.apphacker. Uh, what is it ssl plc now we press enter and voila we get a bypassing trust manager implementation for apphacker.com and we see that the application finally loaded the website and that's it that's how you can easily bypass most popular ssl pinning implementations i hope this was useful in the next tutorial we're going to be going over the basics of frida so basically we're going to code with frida ourselves um, and yeah i hope this was useful and i hope you enjoyed thanks for watching